you know what percentage of military veterans, once they take off the uniform, feel disengaged from society? A hundred? Who's out there in the room? Eighty percent. Eighty percent. Sixty-five. Fifty. It's roughly about fifty-five percent. And why? So our actual mission is to empower veterans and families of fallen heroes to develop character in future generations. And when I'm talking about future generations, I'm talking about middle school and high school age adults for the most part. So what we're trying to do is create purpose-driven individuals who are going to thrive in communities that are based on character. That's what we're really all about. So, you know, people trying to find meaning, like Pat and Doreen Capillaire. People like, you know, Ryan Mannion and Tom Mannion and Amy Looney that, you know, they've lost their loved ones, but they've found some meaning to keep, you know, Travis and Brendan are, are gone physically, and so is Val, but I mean, they're, as long as we keep their stories of good character and leadership alive, they'll never be completely gone. You know, and these families have found that meaning to carry on in, within loss, thriving after loss. Was the namesake of our foundation is actually based on Travis. He's the um, individual without the cover on. Um, next to him is actually Brendan Looney. That is um, Amy Looney's um, former husband. Um, Travis was a Naval Academy grad. Um, he did two back-to-back -back tours. Um, and unfortunately, um, the second tour was where he um, was hit by an enemy sniper and ultimately ended up dying in action overseas. Um, after his death, the um, family started getting a lot of donations and his mother, Janet, uh, was kind of funneling out this money to other programs that were helping benefit veterans. But it got to the point where she figured, instead of funneling out the money, how about we keep the money and put it in our own foundation and get the work started. So his mother actually started the Travis Manion Foundation with about two other women. Um, in their kitchen and since then um, we have grown to about 40 staff members and we have offices across the country now so what we do is a lot more with the um, we have all our other programs Operation Legacy the service project like you just saw all the runs those are great but they don't we don't do those all the time our characters matter program you can do that any day of the week 365 days a year you can do that whenever you want so um, that's our big program but the another thing that I was kind of mentioning on earlier is it would be how I was saying the presentation yeah you get up in front of a group of kids and say hi 12 year olds like let me talk to you their minds are gonna be woo all over the place they don't care about you they don't you know they're all over the place so it's a lot we have another way that we can do that which is called our CLC's or character leadership courses you can bring up a buddy bring a friend bring other veterans, you can bring military spouses, you can bring active duty, reserve, retire, you can bring, we do, um, we're also reaching out to first responders. So what they are is they're basically a one, three, or, a, or one day, a three day, or a 10 week um, course, and we do like team building exercises. So there's pictures here where you have to help guide them, and Dan can talk more about the pictures, but it doesn't have to be as intimidating as putting together a PowerPoint standing up in front of a group of 12 year olds to 20 year olds but 12 is way scarier than 20 in my opinion um and just talk to them that's really intimidating if any of you have kids you probably know how mean and weird and squiggly kids can be so this way you can do something more that's maybe to your needs to your suits and there's all these fun exercises and it's a lot more one-on-one -on -one instead of one to a group of 35. so it has a lot of different feedback to the veteran that would have allow them to really get to know one individual kid who's maybe really struggling. So Dan can talk more about the individual exercises in these pictures and those experiences. So what we do is, you know, some people ask us, hey, do I have to find my own presentations or own places to do a character and leadership course? Uh, we highly encourage people, if you get involved with us as one of our ambassadors or volunteers, that you're free to go out once you're trained to do this as much as possible. But we also have other examples where we do as programs where we're really involved with, summer camps. Um, you know, when we're talking 12 to 20 years old, it doesn't have to be schools. It could be Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, churches, sports teams. It runs a gamut. So you guys have all, you know, some of you I'm sure are parents, you know, you would maybe want to do this at your kid's school or something along those lines. So the character and leadership course, like Lauren's saying, some people don't feel comfortable doing the public speaking aspect. They do like a presentation type thing. They want to work with it a different group of veterans to do these character strengths with the kids and we use 24 character strengths. One of the main ones that we're trying to get across to kids is resiliency because I don't have to tell you guys a lot of kids today 
you know, are not as resilient as, you know, back in the day. Um, and I can't think of a better group to teach resiliency than wounded warriors. You know, people have been knocked down in life and you guys have picked yourselves back up and you're carrying on. You guys, you're civic assets. You've learned a lot, you have character, you have leadership skills that you've learned along the way, and you have a lot to give back. You know, so maybe you can't go out and hike a mountain or something on an expedition, but you can certainly stand there and talk to a bunch of kids like Mike Melzo from the Marines about what he's learned in life and when he's gotten knocked on his behind and picked himself up and trying to impart that to these young kids. Um, this is a minefield exercise, so our one-day version we do different things. We try to, we're trying to get these kids to focus on self-awareness, on what their character strengths are, what they're good at, and what they need to improve upon. And so when we do these fun little games, the minefield exercise, where they have to work together as a team to negotiate this minefield without hitting the stuff that's on the floor. But that's not what the whole game is about. It's about working together as a team. It's about integrity. It's about trust. It's about cooperation. It's about clear communication. But one of the other things is about resiliency, because as they get through the minefield, we start moving it around on them, and the kids all start complaining. You know, that, hey, we're changing the game on them, and those types of things. So at the end of it, what we tell them is, you know, was it really about getting through the minefield? Was it, you know, what do these toys on the ground represent? And they represent life's obstacles. You know, so you sit there and you talk to the kids about, hey, you know, how many times in life are you gonna have to start, you know, with a plan, and as soon as you get into it, the plan goes out the window. Or you were expecting to do something in life and something happened to you, you have to readjust your plan. So that's what those types of exercises are about. So again, all these things, it's supposed to be fun with the kids, but it's supposed to be about teaching them what character and leadership is about and working on their character strengths. And building that character muscle memory, Bob? When you think about it, the skills that have been drummed into your head for the last 15, 20, 25, 30 years, somebody in here, are exactly the skills that he's talking about. This is what you've been trained. This is what you've been learning for the past X amount of time you've been in the military. They're all skills that you have, that sometimes you're not even aware you have them, and you can use them. It fits right in this model. Sure. Yeah. That's why I'm saying we, you know, that's why our focus is on veterans in active duty because, like I'm saying, you guys are civic assets. And, you know, maybe you don't think about, you know, what you've done to service, you're just doing it. But believe me, once you get out of the service and reflect upon it, uh, you look at it as a time of your life, a lot of you. You know, the things that you learned uh, and what you have to give back. So, um, these are some of the camps that we've integrated with. This is at a Ripken camp up in Baltimore. Uh, so Cal Ripken is using baseball as a medium to teach life's lessons out of their baseball field, and then we kind of integrate our programming, our character and leadership course, and then the character does matter presentation as part of that. Um, Liz, I'll let her talk about, you know, what our impact is. Yeah, so um, the foundation actually has only been around for 10 years, um, so kind of in the nonprofit sphere that's considered pretty young. Um, but within those 10 years, we've actually impacted and reached over 200,000 youth, and that also includes, like, other individuals, adults that have come along the way. Um, but that's pretty significant when you think about it in a 10 year time span. So, um, and it keeps building from there. So that's kind of our membership numbers as of right now. And so the, the thing too is, you know, a lot of people think, oh, if I get trained here in Washington, DC, and I get transferred or I leave the military and I go home to wherever, California, you know, what can I do then? So, the, you know, what we're trying to do is train a cadre of ambassadors. So you guys can take this, and wherever you happen to go, whether you stay in this area, or if you go someplace else around the country, you can go out there and lead these programs yourselves. So we're in eight different offices around the country. Besides DC, uh, our headquarters is Doylestown, Pennsylvania, where Travis grew up. Philadelphia, San Diego, Houston, Raleigh, North Carolina, Atlanta, and Chicago are our other offices. Um, we don't have an office per se in Baltimore, but we've been spending a lot of time up there. Uh, for example, like the Ripken camp, so we're trying to make a really big impact in Baltimore City in particular.